Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 24 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's dig into the Piano Roll Editor in Logic Pro, which is the primary editor that you'll use to edit your MIDI and software instrument performances. You can open the Piano Roll at any time, either by selecting the track header of a software instrument track or selecting a MIDI region, and then going up to the Editor button in the control bar in the upper left-hand side. This button looks like a pair of scissors. And once we click on the Editor button, you'll see your selected MIDI performance laid out across the timeline and Piano Roll. We can reduce the size of the editor just by hovering our mouse over the boundary of that window, clicking, holding, and dragging. And we can change the view at any time of the piano roll to any selected region or track. So for example, we could select just this one piano region, or we could view every region on this track by clicking on the track header. I'm gonna press tab on my Mac's keyboard to change the focus to that of the piano roll, and then use key command, command and left to horizontally zoom out. And now we can see both piano regions laid out in the piano roll. We could also view multiple MIDI regions across multiple tracks in the piano roll just by selecting those regions. If I use command and up arrow, I can zoom out vertically so we can see the individual notes of the drum performance with the sub kick performance overlaid on top as well as the key performance right above. If I click an empty section in the tracks area, all performances are removed from the piano roll and now we can try selecting individual regions by holding shift and clicking. Cool, so we now see our sub kick performance right here in the first half between the bars one and five, and then we have our key performance between bars five and nine. And we can listen to the individual performance of any region in any editor just by pressing on the play button at the top of the timeline in the editor. Pressing on the play button again in the editor will stop playback. Cool. The Piano Roll Editor allows you to input and edit your MIDI performances on a note per note basis. With all these regions selected, we can start to edit the performances of the drums, the sub kick, and the keys simultaneously in the same editor window. Just like with the tracks area, we can use key command, control, and option to bring up the zoom tool, and we can zoom in on particular sections. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we have the keys of a piano chromatically laid out, starting with lower notes at the bottom and working our way up to higher notes at the top. We can click on individual notes in the piano roll to hear those notes play back. We can adjust the width of the inspector on the left-hand side of the piano roll just by clicking and holding and dragging on the boundary. And if we click on a piano roll note, we also select all the notes that are performed on that particular note across the production. So as you can see, I've selected every instance of C4 across this key performance. This makes it really easy to adjust all the notes simultaneously just by clicking and holding and dragging with the pointer tool. And as we click on individual notes, we can hear those notes play back. But as you click around the piano roll, hearing these notes over and over again can become a bit much. So you can click on this green MIDI out button to disable the playback of these individual notes as you work with them. All right, so up until now in this series, anytime we've wanted to input MIDI data for a software instrument into the tracks area, we've made it a point to record and perform the notes that we wanna hear either using the musical typing in Logic Pro or with a connected controller but you can also input and edit MIDI information for your tracks by using your mouse. To do that, we're gonna focus in on this empty Wurlitzer track that doesn't have any recordings or performances laid out. And to begin working with this track, we could either right click or hold control and click in an empty section of the tracks area for this track lane. This will bring up a pop-up menu with which we can create a MIDI region. All right, so we now have an empty MIDI region with which we can start to input notes. You can adjust the boundary of that MIDI region in the tracks area, clicking and holding and dragging. 
but you can also adjust the boundary of the region in the piano roll as well. Let's get rid of this region by selecting it in the tracks area and pressing delete on our max keyboard. You could also add a MIDI region to the tracks area by changing your mouse's cursor to that of the pencil tool and clicking. All right, we now have another MIDI region with which we can adjust the boundary in either location. However, even faster is just to select the track header of your software instrument track and then use either the pencil tool or the brush tool in the piano roll to begin inputting notes. A MIDI region is instantly created in the tracks area and the length of the MIDI region will expand as necessary. All right, I'm gonna select all three notes by just clicking, holding, and dragging with the pointer tool over all three notes and pressing delete on my max keyboard. And let's zoom in by holding control and option and then clicking, holding, and dragging over a section of the piano roll. And now we've zoomed in on this particular area of the piano roll. Also expand the view of the editor so we can focus in on this Wurlitzer. If you remember from the mouse tools video earlier in the series, there's a variety of different tools that you can change your mouse's cursor into that you can use for different purposes and functions across Logic Pro. And as it turns out, Logic Pro allows you to set mouse click tools specifically for each editor as well. In this case, I'll set my left click tool as the pointer tool, and I'll set my command click tool to that of the pencil tool, which is our first way of inputting notes with our mouse into the piano roll. When the pencil tool is selected, all you have to do is hover your mouse over the location of which you want a note to be inputted into the piano roll, and then you just click. Cool. All right, we've now added three notes to this electric piano track, and immediately you might notice a couple of distinct things that are occurring. First, no matter where I place the pencil tool, the notes that are generated always seem to line up with these grid lines in the background. The snapping that's occurring is due to the snap setting that is set at the top of the piano roll. Just like with the snap and drag video earlier in the series when working with regions in the tracks area, depending on what the snap setting is set to will determine how many notes are placed and moved in relation to the tempo and time signature of our project. So for example, if we set snapping to bar, if I hover my mouse around the fourth beat of the second bar and input a note, that note is placed at the bar line for bar two. The same will occur for bar three. So be sure to check out the snap and drag video earlier in the series for all the details related to snapping in Logic Pro. That video focuses on how regions work with snapping, but the details in that video will also apply to working with MIDI notes in the piano roll. The other distinct features that you might be noticing as we input notes into the piano roll is that every single note that we've created is the exact same length as well as the same color. This makes it very easy to quickly input a consistent performance in the piano roll. The length of a MIDI note obviously would indicate how long that note should be played. And you can adjust the length of a MIDI note just by clicking and holding with the pencil tool and then dragging back and forth to adjust the length. You can see that the snapping action is dependent on that of the snapping right up here in the top. So I'm gonna set this back to smart. Let's get rid of this note. And once again, I'll click and hold with the pencil tool to adjust the length of the note. If we take a listen, cool, very short. If we do the opposite now, we get a very long note. The color of a MIDI note indicates the velocity of the note, or to put another way, how soft or hard the note is performed. So for example, we could select this note and go to the velocity slider in the inspector on the left-hand side. And if we adjust the slider towards the left, we work our way down to lower values of velocity, which would be notes that are performed with less intensity as noted by the cooler color of the note. If we take a listen, all right, the note is so quiet that we can't hear it. So let's now select the note again and adjust the velocity to something slightly louder. Take a listen. All right, now we're starting to get some volume. And as you can see, as I adjust the velocity slider, because the note has been deselected, nothing is changing. So let's select it once again and adjust. And now if we go all the way to the right by selecting the note, hotter colors like orange and red will indicate a harder or more intense performance. And 
based on the adjustments that we make of a particular note in terms of velocity and length will now be the default note of the next note that we generate in the piano roll. The pencil tool is a powerful tool when working in the piano roll because once again, we can generate notes by clicking. If we click and hold and drag, we can adjust the length of a note. Once we generate a note, we can select individual notes by clicking individual notes with the pencil tool. Or we can select multiple notes by holding shift and clicking with the pencil tool. You can move many notes up and down the piano roll scale just by clicking, holding, and dragging. You can copy and paste notes by holding option and clicking and dragging with the pencil tool. And you can also adjust the length of existing MIDI notes with the pencil tool just by hovering your mouse over the left and right boundaries, clicking, holding, and dragging once again. And our note seems to have disappeared on the right-hand side, but by adjusting the region boundary for our MIDI region, we reveal the hidden MIDI note. So not only can you generate MIDI notes using the pencil tool, but pencil tool also kind of doubles as the pointer tool. Of course, you can't make a selection with the pencil tool by clicking, holding, and dragging over multiple notes because instead you create a note, but you can select multiple MIDI notes just by holding shift and clicking on each note. And a really cool thing is that regardless of the mouse tool that you're using, if you hold control and command and hover your mouse over a MIDI note, you get the velocity tool with which you can adjust the velocity of all selected notes. So we can adjust all four without having to go to the slider in the left-hand side or just a single note. If you generate a note in your project with which you want to use as the default for the next generated note. So maybe I want to start using this green note here. We can right click on that note. And from the pop-up menu, we can define this note as the default note. At which point, if we click again now with the pencil tool, our green note is now the default note that will be generated. The other mouse tool that you'll often use to input and edit MIDI notes into a MIDI region in the piano roll will be the brush tool. Whereas with the pencil tool, you're able to input and edit MIDI notes on a per note basis, the brush tool essentially allows you to paint MIDI notes into the piano roll editor. And the length and pitch of those notes that are generated using the brush tool are dependent on that of the time quantize as well as the scale quantize parameters that are set in the left-hand side of the editor. So check it out. The time quantize is set to one note per bar and the scale quantize is set to that of C major. So with the brush tool, when we click and hold and drag across the timeline, we generate one note per bar. If we move our mouse either up or down, the generated note snaps to the notes of our chosen scale. The brush tool also doubles as the eraser tool. So if you decide you wanna remove a note, you just hover the brush tool over the note you wanna get rid of, you'll see the eraser tool, and once you click, you remove that note. And you can swipe across multiple notes to remove them as well, just by click, hold, and dragging. All right, so let's go to the time quantize, and we'll set this to maybe 16th notes. And we could set the scale to something completely different outside of C major, or you could just turn it off completely. And now, if we use the brush tool, we can paint in 16th notes across the grid. Just like with the pencil tool, you can also adjust the boundaries of a MIDI note with the brush tool just by hovering your mouse over the left or right boundary of that note. Click, hold, and drag to adjust this length. And once again, if we hold Control and Command, we get the velocity tool with which we can adjust the velocity of this note. Sometimes brushing in multiple MIDI notes to the same exact note in the piano roll can be kind of tough, especially if you're working with something like 16th or 32nd notes. For example, as I brush MIDI notes across this entire MIDI region, I'm accidentally moving my mouse above and below my intended note on the piano roll. So thus I'm placing MIDI notes at the wrong pitch. So we use Command Z to undo. And now when we click and hold with the brush tool, the first note that we generate, as long as we continue to click and hold, if we then just press shift on our max keyboard, you don't even have to hold it, just click on it and now draw. No matter where you move the mouse, the notes that are generated never stray from your intended pitch on the piano roll. And lastly, with the brush tool, we can also define a particular pattern to paint in. Just by selecting 
all the notes in the pattern. And with the brush tool active, if we right click or hold control and click, in the pop-up menu, we can define this as the brush pattern. So check it out. If we now paint in these MIDI notes, when I click and hold and then press shift so I don't have to worry about which direction my mouse goes, either up or down, we start generating notes. And the notes that we generate follow the pattern that's been set with that menu. And you can always reset the brush pattern just by once again with the brush tool, right click or hold control and click, and then going up to reset brush pattern. So now we're back to a standard 16th note brush pattern. And of course, we always have the pointer tool, which allows us to make selections, adjust the length of MIDI notes, move MIDI notes, make adjustments to MIDI notes. And we can always delete a note by selecting it and pressing delete on our Max keyboard. And you can also mute notes by making a selection and pressing Control M on your Max keyboard to mute those notes. All right, we've tackled a lot of ground in the piano roll editor. Tomorrow, we're gonna dig into two particular features of the piano roll that you're probably gonna see yourself using time and again. And that's the time quantize as well as scale quantize features. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow. Take care.